What's going on guys? My name is Josh Washburn and Washburn Fabco. And today we're going to be installing a compressor motor on my cobalt compressor. When I say motor, I'm referring to the electrical motor on the far side here. I have a new motor from Vivor that we're going to try out. They actually sent me this for free to test out and make a video. I have no clue why. I do not know why this happens, but I've had this compressor since about 2017 or 2018 and Every motor I've put on here has failed within a year. I don't know if it's because the amount I use it or what. I have no clue. So we'll test out this Vivor motor and see if it lasts longer than the ones that I've tried. All the ones that I've tried have just been regular ones from Amazon, but even the original motor did not last very long. I'm going to show you guys how to take this off, then we're going to take the old one out the box and get started. If you don't know much about compressors and you have one and it's not working, an easy way to know if it's your compressor motor, at least in my case, is if you see any smoke coming out of here when it's not working. Because I've seen that on every compressor motor that failed. If you still get some turn, like if you were to hit this reset button here and you start getting some turn, but then it just seems weak, that's usually what happens before they start smoking. I've seen a couple of times where you can take a screwdriver and put it in here and give it a little extra go to kick on, but that's like a last ditch effort to get a little bit more out of a broken one before your new one gets here, right? So ultimately it should just be replaced. Since I've done this a whole bunch of times now, it should be pretty easy, but we'll see. So the first thing we have to do is get these tabs out back here on the back side to get the grate off of our pulley setup. You probably just push it up. I'm gonna grab it over the top. Get that out of the way. Next, I'm gonna take off of these bolts that are underneath here on both sides. So I have all of my bolts out. This is loose on here right now. The only thing still holding it is the belt on the pulleys. What we need to do is get this wire out of here, which is our wire for our power. Make sure it's unplugged. Mine just has a Phillips head or eight millimeter. I'm just gonna use a Phillips head because I know I didn't put these on very tight. We're gonna be able to see our wiring in here. Make sure your power is completely disconnected for your compressor. We're just gonna take a look, see where everything plugs in and make sure we plug it in the same way on the other machine. It'd be smart to take a picture. Should be able to pull all this stuff out the side. With our wiring all disconnected now, we can pretty much just pull it to the side, twist it out. So once we get our motor out, we have to get our pulley off. One thing you have to make sure is when you're buying a new motor you, that you have to have the same pulley shaft size right here or else it's obviously not going to fit without a different pulley. A lot of the other specs don't matter. Like this compressor originally had a 3.7, I think. And then I've been using 5 horse ever since the 3.7 that it came with went out. As long as you have the right size shaft, you'll be fine. So to get this off, we have an Allen wrench. It's going to be harder for you guys to see. But there's an Allen key hole right in the side of it that's locking this into place. So I'm going to loosen that up and get it pulled off. I used some WD-40 silicone lube, sprayed it in the holes where it can get on the key, and then I pounded the key out with a big flat head on the other side. It does damage the end of the shaft here, but if you're not using this motor again because it's junk, it, we don't really care, right? So. So that's all we need from our other motor. You do need to make sure to keep these pins for the pulley to lock it in. Here's our new motor. I'm gonna take this shaft and key, the new key, and slide it in here. And I'm gonna make sure to hold it at the bottom so that when I start putting the, the pulley on, that it doesn't start sliding down like that. It'll make it hard to get on, all right? So we want it to be around the top. Once I have it in, I'm going to take my two little locking Allen head retainers, put those back in place. All right, the pulley should be all ready to go. Next, we're going to throw it up there and get the electrical set up. 
So I got the motor sitting up here. Before I do anything, I am going to open up the wiring case and hook up my little harness that I got here. All right, so I have everything hooked up again. Hopefully you can see this. I have my green going to my ground right here. And we have the white up top right here. And we have the black down here at the bottom. All right, I got that wrapped up. I'm gonna connect the belt back here to the pulley and just make sure I get all my bolts in up here. So when we're doing this, we have to make sure that we get our belt tight enough. We don't want too much play on there where it's gonna spin or slip. So we have to come up with a way to pry it over. This would be a lot easier with two people. So the best thing I have to do on mine is stick a pry bar between this support for the guard on the back and pry forward. The only thing is, is it's only really pushed on this side, so it might be slightly in an angle, but I think we'll be all right. Whatever you do, do not pry off of this. You'll probably snap it and that won't be a good day. So you can probably see here, I got still have play in here. I don't have it crazy tight, but I'm pretty sure that's tight enough for it to operate properly.